Hi there, welcome to Stellaris Dev Diary 105 2.0 Cherry H patch notes. We are going to read through all the patch notes, but first we're going to go through the Dev Diary. Also, what you're hearing at the moment is Doomsday. That's one of the preview tracks of Stellaris Apocalypse that is coming along with the expansion. So uh, we'll not going we'll not be going through the trigger documentation for modders. That is too much for my voice today. I'm deeply affected by the flu and this death diary is mostly for my subscribers. But if you're not my subscriber, you're invited to join in. I'm going to read everything to you. So you can also use this as a podcast. So um, let's just look at the achievements. 10 new achievements coming with 2.0 and the apocalypse updated. Exterminators. Wow. Destroy another empire's capital planet and Clash of the Titans. Defeat a fallen empire titan in battle <coughs> with a fleet of your own that includes a titan. Stay on target. Destroy another empire's colossus while it is in the process of firing on a planet. That is very interesting. Citadel of Death. Own a citadel with 40k fleet power. Tradition is everything. Unlock all 42 traditions. Emissary. Explore a natural wormhole. That sounds strange, but no Khan do. Kill the great Khan in battle. Pandora's world. Shield a planet belonging to fanatic purifiers, ravenous swarms or determined exterminators. Imperial highway. Own four active gateways. And starstruck, own 200 star bases. <laughs> Outposts count. That's mine, starstruck. That's the kind of player I am. What is yours? So, let's go to the patch notes. First, there is the designer's note. That's going to be interesting. Stellaris has changed quite dramatically for 2.0. Now experience for the better. Overall, you can expect the gameplay to have been slowed down a little, and you now need to make active decisions on which star systems you want to expand into and control. You'll need to build star bases to control systems and defend your borders. You'll need to outfit your star bases with shipyards, build military ships, or turn them into powerful fortresses to defend vital choke points. <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> and uh, strategically important locations. How you use your fleets will be different as well, as you now have a limit on how many ships you can have in one fleet. It will also be important to make sure that your fleets are positioned correctly so that they can respond to any threat to your borders, whether be it from pirates or hostile space empires. The war system has changed as well, and you now need to make claims on an enemy's territory before declaring war on them. This means that it is now possible to declare war for a single system without having to wage a long drawn out war for it. Larger wars have changed as well with the arrival of the Colossus in the Apocalypse expansion. The Colossus is a powerful super weapon that can be equipped with various armaments, one of which is capable of blowing up a planet. We hope you are ready for the apocalypse. <laughs> Let's go to the features. With a sip of water. The Colossus. Added a new ship's a size called the Colossus. Graphical variations for all ship sets, including plantoid and humanoid, if those species packs are owned. Oh. Colossus needs an ascension perk and can be equipped with different planet killer weapons capable of devastating entire planets. Then the Titan added a new ship size called the Titan, with graphical variations for all ship sets, including plantoid and humanoid, if those species packs are owned. Titans are massive ships with Titanic-class weaponry that serve as the flagships of your fleet and have auras that can buff friendly ships and debuff hostiles. And the Iron Cannon added a new defensive platform called the Iron Cannon. Wait a moment. Oh my! 
let's start the music. And let's get back to the Iron Cannon. The Iron Cannon is a titanic class weapon meant to defend your star bases against enemy capital ships. An Ascension Perks Colossus project required to build the Colossus. Enigma enigmatic engineering prevents enemies from reverse engineering debris from your ships and extends sensor range. And nihilistic acquisition allows you to abduct pops while bombarding enemy planets. I love that somehow. It's so nihilistic. Civics. Life Seeded changes your home world into a size 25 Gaia world and also makes other planet classes uninhabitable for your species. Barbaric Despoilers allows you to raid and abduct pops while bombarding enemy planets, but other empires will dislike you. Post Apocalyptic changes your home world into a tomb world and allows your species to survive on other tomb worlds. <coughs> and we've got Unity Ambitions. A new set of very powerful edicts that cost Unity to enact. The cost is equal to one tradition unlock. Unity Ambitions are unlocked by the Ascension Theory technology. Marauders added a new type of non-playable empire from which you may hire fleets, admirals, generals or pay them to attack your rivals. A Marauder Empire can awaken under the leadership of a great Khan, constituting a mid-game crisis. When that happens, the Marauder Empire will begin to maraud, expand and attack its neighbors. Music. Three new music tracks by Andreas Woldertoff. You're listening to one of them. Other. Uh, Utopia. Psionic assimilation is now possible for empires that have completed psionic ascension to give other bi biological species residing in their empire the psionic trait through assimilation, if you have the Utopia expansion. Then we come to the free features and to another sip of water for me. Ah. The controversial one, FTL rework. Every Empire now starts with a hyperdrive FTL. Wormhole travel and warp travel are no longer available FTL types at the start of the game and have been changed into additional, very different from before modes of travel detailed below. Pairs of natural wormholes can now be found scattered across the galaxy, connecting two star systems across vast distances. It is possible to pass through them for near instantaneous travel with the correct technology. Gateways are ancient megastructures connected in a network. Like the wormholes, they allow instant travel across the galaxy. Gateways need to be activated before they can be used and you are able to construct new gateways once you have the technology to do so. Gateways do not require Utopia to restore or build. FTL inhibitors prevent hostile fleets from advancing they can only leave by hyperlane they came from, with any FTL inhibitors in the systems remain active. Ah, Starbases and planets get access to FTL inhibitors if you have researched the associated technology. Jump drives now allow fleets to make near instantaneous point-to-point -point jumps that ignore hyperlanes. However, jumping has a long cooldown and significantly debuffs the fleet, but the cooldown is in effect. Kind of an emergency thing now. Or a big surprise if you got to cross a certain distance. Or if you want to get your Colossus to that Empire planet. To that Empire capital. <coughs> We've got star bases. System ownership is now determined by who controls the star base in it. Star bases are similar to frontier outposts and spaceports combined into one. They can be upgraded and specialized with different modules and buildings. You must now fully survey a system before constructing a starbase in it. Starbases can be upgraded from outposts into citadels, five levels total. Starbases have module slots, and then counting the levels, 0, 2, 4, 6, 6, that can be filled out with different modules such as shipyards and trading hubs. And they have also building slots, one, two, th uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, that can be filled out with different buildings such as the Fleet Academy and the Nebula Refinery. Starbases can build and maintain their own fleet of defensive platforms. The number of defensive platforms 
A starbase can support depends on its size, buildings and other factors such as its ascension perks. Uh, fleets. Fleet command limit is a cap on how many ships can be in the same fleet, effectively limiting how many ships a single admiral can command and provide bonuses to. Something I really, I really like, limiting the fleet size. Uh -huh. Also, let's have a look at the music again. I want some music. It gives me the drive. Fleet, fleet, fleet. Yeah, Ascension perks now. Most basic Ascension perks are now available in the base version of Stellaris. Megastructures and psionic biological synthetic Ascension paths still require Utopia, <clears throat> as it should be. Added the Eternal Vigilance Ascension perk that boosts your defensive capabilities, increasing Starbase defensive platform cap and effectiveness of defensive platforms and Starbases. Add the Executive Vigor Ascension perk that doubles your Edict duration. <clears throat> So you can now have defensive empires. That wasn't really possible before. <clears throat> army rework. Defensive armies are no longer built, but are rather created automatically to garrison planets from certain buildings, such as capitals and fortresses. <clears throat> Orbital bombardment was changed. When a fleet is bombarding a planet, it will now deal damage to both armies defending the planet and the planet itself. Planet damage is a value that goes from 0 to 100% and once it hits maximum, a tile on the planet will be damaged, ruining any building on it and potentially killing pops and creating blockers. More severe forms of bombardment do more damage to both armies and planets. Plants can now construct fortress buildings that provide additional defensive garrisons. Armies spawned by a fortress cannot suffer any damage from orbital bombardment while the fortress is functional. Assault armies engaged in battle on a planet will now cause collateral damage to the planet in the form of planetary damage similar to from bombardment. Ooh. Different types of armies cause different amounts of collateral damage. Armies at low morale will now have their combat ability reduced in addition to the more severe penalty that already exists for being at zero morale. Planets now have a combat width that determines how many units can take and deal damage at the same time during combat. Which makes sense to reform the combat. Plants no longer have a limit to how many armies can be garrisoned on them. Oh, okay. Armies now have a chance to disengage from battle when they attack damage and their health is at around 50% or below. Disengaged units will not deal damage or take damage as long as there are other units to fill the combat with. Retreating from an invasion now results in each retreating unit having a chance of being overrun and destroyed. The chance increases if the unit is at low health, so it could be a potential killer, oh my god. I really like the army rework, but it's easy to improve the current army system. <laughs> it was, yeah, it worked somehow but it was like more like a checkbox that you had to fill than something tactical this is a little bit more tactical we'll see how it works out unit experience armies and ships will now gain experience from combat and rank up higher rank armies and ships are more effective in battle oh that is great unit that that's just a side note here <laughs> that is so good i love that I really, really love that. Unit experience adds so much to a game. It's it's crazy. It's crazy. It's ad it adds value to your ships. It's not only uh, you stuff them ships there. Ah, uh, why upgrade? You can just build new ones. No, you want to keep your, your experienced ones, right? And galactic terrain. The next point that is so good. Certain systems will now have effects on ships in them. Oh, only on ships. Ah, oh. pulsars, no neutron stars, and black holes will affect ships in the same system in various ways. While nebulas prevent all outside sensors from having a view of the system. Well, it's a start. There can be more added on the galactic terrain. Fleet manager. 
Added a new interface that lets you manage your fleets. You can manage templates, retrofit designs and reinforce all fleets. That is so good. So good. It's just great. And then technology. Technologies have been reworked into five tiers and many have had their base costs changed. Renamed atmospheric restoration to atmospheric transformation. Doctrine fleet support no longer unlocks any spaceport modules, but instead increases naval capacity. Interstellar fleet traditions tech no longer unlocks any spaceport module, but instead unlocks two starbase buildings. Auxiliary, auxiliary fire control technology added to the game. Modular engineering technology has been added, which reduces starbase building and module build cost by 25%. Each ship size has two technologies that increases hull points. For example, corvettes can increase their hull points by plus 100 two times. Each ship size has a technology to increase the build speed of that ship size by 25%. Technologies that unlock new ship sizes also increase fleet command limit by plus 10. Orbital hydrophonics tech removed from the game. Will to power tech removed from the game. Oh. <laughs> but what will be there in instead of the orbital hydrophonics? I love them. Come on. <laughs> Wormhole stabilization technology has been added to the game and it is required to travel through wormholes. Gateway activation technology has been added to the game and it is required to activate gateways and to travel through them. Gateway construction technology has been added to the game and it is required to build new gateways. That's going to be really cool. Oh, there's so much to read. Let's, let's have the music again. We were a technology, right? Then traditions. Oh. Tradition cost is now based on number of owned planets and systems. Number of pops has no effect, which means you need to cherry pick your planets and systems even more. It's going to be a choice much more, which is good. Reach for the Stars expansion tradition no longer affects colonization influence cost, but rather reduces Starbase influence cost by 10%. Galactic Ambitions expansion tradition no longer reduces upkeep for Frontier Outposts, but rather increases Starbase capacity by plus 2. Yeah, makes sense, right? Mm. Domination. Domination adopt effect now unlocks demand tribute and demand vassalization diplomatic actions instead of the previous effects oh, that's good i love these things that unlock makes so much sense to have a different experience purity never surrender purity tradition now increases starbase hull points by plus 10 percent and defensive army health plus 50 percent prosperity Administrative operations <coughs> now also reduces Starbase upkeep by 10%. Transstellar Corporations no longer unlocks private colony ship, but rather increases energy output by 5%. And trading hubs produce an additional 1 energy. Harmony. The greater good effect on unrest reduction reduced from 25 to 20%. Supremacy. Supremacy adopt effect no longer increases border range, of course, because that's not in the game anymore, rather increases starbase capacity by plus 2 and reduces starbase upgrade cost by 20%. Supremacy finish effect no longer increases fire rate but instead unlocks war doctrine policies, which allow you to give different bonuses to your ships. Mastership rights no longer increases naval capacity but rather reduces upgrade cost by 20%. In addition, the effect on ship build speed has been increased from 15 to 25%. Right of Conquest now reduces claim cost by 20% instead of war demand cost. War games no longer increases admiral level cap, but rather increases command limit by 20 and ship fire rate by 10%. Ah, Discovery Traditions, Polytechnic Education Effect on Leader Experience Gain Reduced from 33 to 25%. Why ever? Ascension perks. Master builders now require zero point power. 
gives the Mega Engineering tech option. Oh, now it gives not the tech, but the tech option. So it's not that cheesy quick anymore. Interesting. Interstellar Dominion no longer increases border range, but rather reduces Starbase influence cost and claim cost by 20%. Mastery of Nature no longer unlocks all the tile blocker clearing technologies, but rather gives your planets access to an edict that can permanently increase their size by 1 to 3, depending on their size. In addition, if effects on the tile blocker clear cost reduced from 50 to 33%. One Vision now also increases unity output by 10%. World Shaper now requires climate restoration technology. World Shaper no longer gives atmospheric manipulation technology, but rather unlocks the ability to terraform planets into Gaia worlds. In addition, effect on terraforming speed removed. Voidborn now only requires Star Fortress technology. Galactic Force Protection effect on naval capacity reduced from 200 to 80. Oh! In addition, Fleet Command Limit is also increased by 20, so mm, balanced. Fleet command limit increased by 20. That, um, that sounds like it could be very powerful. Crisis reduced the chance of the contingency crisis triggering. Ah, oh, contingency now uses particle tachyon lenses instead of Archimedes. Contingency occupied planets are now left without an owner upon liberation to prevent border go. Okay. Fallen empires. And uh, new music. Come on. Give me the music. Play the music again. Gives me the drive. Are we going through all balance? I fear I cannot do it. Um... Wait, free features. That's where we were. Traits, sensors, and intel. Have I been. Oh, I've been dipping in the balance. Never mind. Fallen Empire. Enigmatic Observer Fallen Empires now hate fanatic purifiers, devouring swarms, and determined exterminators slightly less, minimizing instant war declarations. It's now possible to spawn five Fallen Empires in a huge galaxy if you have Synthetic Dawn. That's cool. I love that. Let's go back to uh, technology from the patch notes. New things. So, traits. Traditional species trait has been added, which increases unity output. Quarrel subspecies trait has been added, which reduces unity output. Uh, spaceports. As an entity no longer exists and starbases with shipyards are required to build military ships, every planet can build civilian ships through the spaceport tab, through the spaceport tab, including habitats. Oh, good, 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 good. That's good. All spaceport modules removed from the game, some were converted into starbase buildings. Then pirates can now spawn in any unowned system near your borders. Pirate spawns keep getting stronger as the game goes on. Pirate will, pirates will raid systems to destroy mining and research stations. Pirates cannot spawn during the first 10 years of the game. Good to know, eh? But after the 10 years, you need to be ready. Ah, <laughs> that's gonna be fun. Yeah, there's, is that a pirate slider? Someone posted that there's Stellaris has been transformed into Slidaris. And I'm all for the pirate slider. Like in the old Civ games, when you could go for living hell barbarians or something, and the barbarians would even try to found cities everywhere <laughs> and overrun everything. That that was pretty cool. Uh, sensors and intel. Sensor range is now a measure of how many FTL jumps away you can see, rather than Euclidean distance. Their sensor range of one gives view of only the same system, two of the same and neighboring systems, and so on. Intel levels have changed, so this is more a game thing now, instead of based on some kind of reality perception. 
which is okay, it's a game after all. Intel levels have changed, they are as follows, none, unknown, low, unsurveyed but known, medium, surveyed but not, not in sensor range, high, unsurveyed in sensor range, and full surveyed in sensor range. You no longer need to survey systems owned by other empires you have comms with. Exception is systems owned by fallen empires or marauders. That's also a nerve to the discovery traditions, where you could fly through the system still and like get uh, the bonuses from that. So, hmm, it's so so. Edicts, edicts now have an all now all have an upfront cost and a duration, rather than being able to be toggled on and off. The only exception are one-off edicts such as land reclamation. Removed a bunch of planetary edicts, and many others were turned into empire edicts. In addition, many of them had their effects tweaked or reworked. Recycling campaign empire edict added to the game, which reduces consumer goods cost. Healthcare campaign empire edict added to the game, which increases pop growth. Oh, that's cool. Education campaign empire edict added added to the game, which increases leader experience gain. Uh, that's also... I see the... I see the logic. Fear campaign, Empire Edict added to the game, which increases unity output and xenophobia. Oh... Setup. Can now set when mid-game and end-game events will start at Galaxy Setup. Oh, that, that's just great. <coughs> <coughs> Your endgame crisis can start at any time now. <laughs> Even at the beginning. Oh, that's gonna be fun. No, that's the new challenge, right? Start at year zero. Maximum crisis. And endgame events can start right now. <laughs> Can now set overall speed at which tech and traditions are unlocked at Galaxy Setup. Can now set frequency of wormholes and abandoned gateways at Galaxy Setup. And music, come on. Once more music. Miscellaneous. Added some new events for gaining additional precursor artifacts outside of anomalies. Very good. This should guarantee that precursor chains can always be completed. I'm still waiting for my first precursor chain to be completed and over 600 hours played. <laughs> so, yes, please. I want to do that. <laughs> it's now possible to start a game with no empire, other empires in it, but this will disable conquest victory. Oh. That's interesting too, like that's some kind of build-up thing. You now start with your home system explored and largely fixed, slightly randomized number of resources present. No longer possible to trade star charts with other empires, instead you can trade for communications. War philosophy now controls whether or not you can freely make claims on other empires. It's always possible to claim systems of empires that you are fighting a defensive war against. That's cool, good. Broken planets are now their own planet class instead of using the barren planet class. A skilled Dari are now spiritualist rather than materialist, as the pre-scripted empires were looking a bit materialist heavy. Okay. Changed the Iphorix from xenophobe to pacifist and gave them corporate dominion to give them a different AI personality from Yondar attraction. Added new component reactor booster with three levels and accompanying text Orc slot component that gives extra power to ships. The basic version is available as a starting tick. Mineral processing technology no longer gives 2000 mineral storage cap, but rather unlocks nebula refinery. Consolidated mineral storage modifiers from techs into just a few techs instead of spread all over. Military stations removed as buildable station type. They are now defensive platforms for star bases. Okay. Kind of... I'll, I'll miss them. They should have improved them. Like, 
why can't you can't you build military stations where you want? Like, okay, it's it's understandable from gameplay, but I miss the freedom a bit. Added resource replicator building converts 50 energy into 30 minerals per month. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's something. Auxiliary fire control, aux component added to the game, which is an aux slot component that increases weapon hit chance. Curators now ask if you wish to renew their research agreement when it ends. Ah, oh, that's good. One more thing not to always check like a madman. Added a new corvette section, pick a chip with one point defense slot and two small slots. Climate transformation technology is now called climate restoration again. Added feral preterin events. Oh, that's 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 good. So in <coughs> in the view of the state of my voice, the balance and the user modding will have to wait, but there is things that I'm still interested in performance I'm sure every one of you is interested in that if you like to play huge games roof caching of pathfinding and system distance from FTL consolidation into hyper lanes less ships overall in late game should lead to increased performance a lot of bug fixes too which is always my pet peeve. And this is the trigger documentation for modders. I'm sure I'm I'm sure it's very good. But I can't read it anymore. For the love of whatever god. <laughs> whatever. For the love of Cthulhu or something. If Cthulhu has love. So, thank you for watching, or listening rather. Make the music again. Have a good time until next time. Uh, I think I can recommend Apocalypse out of, the, out of the box now. I don't know. It seems like a good thing to have. So if you get a reduction for pre-ordering. And if you're anyways interested, you could order it. If you're updating anyways to St uh, Stellaris 2.0, you will get the new FTL anyways. So um, if that is your problem with it, I don't know. You should try it out first, I think, if that's your problem. If you're, if you're skeptical about that, then try it out first. You can always go back to 191 and play the game as it is right now. It's a good game. But uh, I'd try giving 2.0 a chance. It might be great. The chances might be great. I'm I'm trusting on it, on them to be to to make the game better really. So and many of these changes just unlock opportunities to make the game better and this is why I support the Apocalypse expansion and the Cherry Age 2.0 update. So that said, uh, you'll hear from me again if you're on the channel. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, let's see each other again. So what was your favorite achievement? Will you exterminate? Will you be starstruck? I'd love to hear. Have a good time until next time and happy gaming.